The cytoskeleton fills many roles. It is long and thin, made of protein fibers, and so it is generally strong. You find it all over the cell, but it, a lot of it is concentrated directly under the plasma membrane. It supports the membrane, just like our skeleton supports us, but it can do a lot more. It helps cells move, like when amoebas reach out long pseudopods to pull themselves into another area. It helps organelles move, like when vesicles travel along the microtubules using motor proteins or arranging organelles as the cell divides. It also helps anchor the cell in place by attaching to fibers outside the cell. We're going to discuss three major types of cytoskeletal fibers. Each of them has their own monomer, their own size and shape, and their own unique functions. So I want to give you fair warning that, much, that like much of chemistry, learning these cytoskeletal fibers involves some memorization. So I'm going to do a summary table after I've discussed each of them in detail. One thing before I go into any of the fibers in details, I want you to look at motor proteins. Motor proteins are specialized molecules that use energy to change their shape and move. We use them to move our muscles and carry organelles around, among many other things. And there's still a lot of research being done about the motor proteins and their association with cytoskeletal fibers. Both microfilaments and the microtubules have special motor proteins that are related just to them. And they run up and down the fibers of the cytoskeleton like tracks for a railroad car. So we're going to start with the thinnest fiber, and that is the microfilament. Microfilaments are composed of actin fibers, which are built from actin monomers, and they can build up or break down as needed. Their associated motor protein is called myosin. So here you can see some myosin. And actin fibers plus myosin move our muscles. And so this is a zoomed in view, but let me zoom out a little bit. Muscle fibers are actually composed of many tiny little units called sarcomeres. So here is one sarcomere. And so in red, you can see the actin, and in blue, you can see the myosin. And with ATP and the presence of calcium ions, those myosins are going to start to walk. And as they walk, they're going to pull the red actin fibers in, creating a contraction. And so you can see how wide that sarcomere was and contracted how short it is. And so all of these little sarcomeres all contracting at once due to signaling from calcium gives you a muscle contraction. Very cool. Microfilaments also form the contractile ring that divides cells. So you can see that it's made of actin there, a lot of actin fibers linked together. And they help form pseudopods, which we often associate with amoebas. And so some cells move with pseudopods. They push their cell membrane out in an extension that is arm or leg-like, hence the name pseudopod or false foot. The cytoplasm flows into that area in a process called cytoplasmic streaming. Microfilaments can also use actin binding proteins to crosslink and form a meshwork of fibers right inside the cell membrane to support its shape. So you can see all the various shapes that could be created by linking actin fibers together with these actin binding proteins. This also happens in microvilli. Microvilli are in the intestines. They increase the surface area and the absorptive area of these intestinal lining cells. And so the microvilli are these actin fibers going up into the microvilli, pushing out the cell membrane in that area and supporting it as food and, you know, the liquid contents of digestion move through our intestines. 
The intermediate filaments are our second cytoskeletal group and they are really the catch-all group. They are intermediate in size and often involve a monomer that is related to the keratin family um, of proteins just like our hair and our fingernails. If you imagine a fiber that's like hair and fingernails, then it should come as no surprise that these fibers stabilize the cell structure and they resist tension or compression, really any movement or pressure of any kind. So they give us a lot of our outer structure close to the surface of our skin, especially our face. The nuclear lamina is also an intermediate filament. They are the fiber that reminds me, um, these intermediate filaments, they remind me the most of our actual skeleton. Finally, we're going to talk about ways later on that cells are held together. So when I talk about desmosomes, which are a lot like rivets holding the cells together, you can think of intermediate filaments because they actually create and compose the desmosomes, which is that rivet-like structure linking cells together. Finally, the microtubules. While I think microfilaments are really cool because of muscle movement, microtubules seem even more amazing to me. They have a monomer that is made of two subunits called tubulin. The subunits are alpha and beta tubulin, making this protein an example of quaternary structure. Those monomers take two subunits to make one functional structure. They build up not into fibers, but into tubes, and each tube is actually 13 tubulins around, and it has two chemically different ends due to those alpha and beta tubulins, and so we call them the plus end and the minus end. Microtubules are dynamic. They are constantly breaking and forming, so sometimes a microtubule organizing center is required to stabilize them. Centrioles, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, that are involved in cell division, are examples of microtubule organizing centers, or MTOCs. And so again, those stabilize the microtubules, because if you didn't stabilize them, they would just be breaking down and reforming and breaking down and reforming, and it wouldn't be very organized or helpful at all. Microtubules can also fuse together into doubles and triples, much like gluing a bunch of straws together. And so centrioles are a good example of the triple-fused microtubule units. And, making microtubules even more special, they have not one, but two motor proteins. And those motor proteins are kinesin, which always walks towards the plus end of tubulin, and dynein, which always moves towards the minus end. So all of these structural things that I've talked about, what does it allow microtubules to do? Well, first of all, the motor proteins can grab organelles like vesicles and pull them along a microtubule road-like network. And so here you see them in detail, walking their separate directions, and here is a little bit more zoomed out. You can see those kinesins. There's two of them for every vesicle moving towards the plus end and the dynein moving towards the minus end. And dynein you can often pick out because it looks like three globular circles, three little circles. That's how I can pick it out. The next microtub big microtubule purpose, so we've got moving vesicles, and now composing cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella are structures that move, help cells move. They, they come out of the cell and move the liquid surrounding the cell, often moving the, propelling the cell through its environment. And in cilia and flagella, they have this same pattern that we call 9 plus 2 because we have 9 double tubes or double microtubules and two single microtubules in the center. So it's a 9 plus 2 pattern and again cilia is there are these little short hairs all over the cell. Flagella there's typically only one or two. They're longer and they beat in more of a serpentine fashion but all of this movement is done 
by sliding the dinings across each other. So you're sliding these double tubes past each other. So as one's moving down, it's it's almost like operating a puppet. It it sorts to move the whole cilia or the whole flagella hair. So moving organelles, being cilia and flagella or allowing them to move, and finally something you've already seen, the centrioles. Centrioles are formed by a ring of nine micro triple microtubules and they help stabilize the microtubules so that microtubules can attach to the chromosome and pull them apart during cell division. So what does that look like? You can see here that all those purple fibers, those are the microtubules, the two sticks, the two pairs of sticks in the center, those are supposed to be chromosomes. And so the microtubules can attach to those chromosomes. The microtubules can push each other apart right there, lengthening the cell. And if you look at this zoomed in area, the dynein is actually attached to the chromosome and is pulling that chromosome towards the end of the cell. So they're extremely important to cell division. So to wrap it up with a summary, in size, you can see the sizes here in nanometers, microfilaments being the smallest, microtubules the biggest, intermediate exactly like their name implies in the middle, they're monomers, actin, keratin, and tubulin. They're motor proteins. Intermediate filaments do not have an associated motor protein that we're going to talk about. Microfilaments have myosin, microtubules have kinesin and dynein and their associated directions. And then just to focus in on the major purposes of microfilaments, they move the cell they move the muscles, and they're responsible for cytoplasmic streaming. They also support a lot of the outside of the cell. Intermediate filaments, they're tough, they're fibrous, they're resilient, they really are strong, they hold the cell together, and the nuclear lamina was one major example. And microtubules, they are tubes, cylinder-like structures, they are dynamic, they lengthen and shorten very easily, and they move around both vesicles and chromosomes. Chromosomes during cell division, vesicles almost all of the time. And that's it for the cytoskeleton. We're going to pick back up with all the things outside the cell, and then that'll be the end of our cell organelles lesson. We will cover cell membranes or plasma membranes in another lesson.